I'm Nick Snow, watching government for Oil and Gas Journal in Washington, D.C. U.S. Interior Secretary Sally Jewell spoke extensively about efforts to improve the greater sage grouse's habitat when she appeared before the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee on February 24th. Then committee member Rob Portman brought up the northern long-eared bat. The Ohio Republican said the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, an Interior Department agency, was considering whether to list the 3 to 7 inch bat, which is found across much of the eastern and north central United States, as an endangered species. He expressed concern that it potentially could jeopardize Ohio's growing oil and gas resource development. Jewell responded that this bat's primary threat was white nose syndrome, a fungal disease which already has cut the animal's population dramatically at many hibernation sites in the Northeast. She said FWS proposed a designation under Section 4D of the Endangered Species Act. This would allow some forest management, transmission corridor, and species tracking activities. FWS's January 16th notice said. The secretary seemed to suggest that federal agencies, states, and local stakeholders, including communities, property owners, and oil and gas producers, might work collaboratively on the northern long-eared bat problem in a manner similar to what has occurred with the greater sage-grouse farther west. Congressional Republicans remained concerned. House Resources Committee Chairman Rob Bishop of Utah and Senate Environment and Public Works Committee Chairman James M. Inhofe from Oklahoma, along with seven other GOP federal lawmakers, asked on March 17th for 60-day extensions of both the comment period for the proposed 4D designation and the scheduled April 2nd final listing decision. We urge you to protect the NLAB from population loss associated with WNS without unduly burdening impacted communities and citizens by driving up costs for farmers, foresters, and families who ultimately will have to bear the burden of any unnecessarily onerous rules. As it is clear that human activities are not a reasonable basis for adding the NLEB to the endangered and threatened species list, they said in a letter to FWS Director Daniel M. Ash. The agency did list the northern long-eared bat as threatened on April 2nd, with an interim 4D rule, which will become effective May 4th. Kathleen Sagama, who was in Washington on February 24th, as part of the Western Energy Re Alliance's annual winter call-up when members come east to visit congressional offices and federal agencies, told OGJ she was not surprised when Portman mentioned the BAT's pending listing decision earlier that day at the committee hearing where Jewell testified. The federal court settlement, which imposed deadlines for FWS to reach protection decisions affected 878 species, said Sagama, who is the Alliance's Government and Public Affairs Vice President. People in states where there has been little or no oil and gas activity before will feel the effects of this agreement with two environmental groups, she observed. That's watching government for this week. In Washington, I'm Nick Snow for Oil and Gas Journal.